How do internet travels across oceans? Hello, lovely YouTube family. Welcome back to Nano Tens. In today's videos, we're going to talk about how the internet travels across oceans. Before we start, I would want you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. The internet consists of small cords that travel around the world, traveling along thin wires that stretch like hair on the ocean floor. The data is compressed from New York to Sydney and from Hong Kong to London within the time it takes to read the word. Approximately 750,000 miles of cables already connect the continents to meet the insatiable need for communication and entertainment. Companies typically pool resources and collaborate on submarine cable projects that everyone can share such as highways. But now Google is on its path, the first project of its kind between the United States and Chile with its largest data center in Latin America. People think the data is on the cloud, but it's not, said Jane Stowell, who oversees the construction of Google's submarine cable project. It's in the sea. Getting there is a demanding and time-consuming process. A 456-foot ship called a Durable will eventually carry the cable to the sea, but first the cables are assembled in a vast factory in Newington, New Hampshire, just a few hundred yards away. Subcom-owned factories are equipped with special machinery used to maintain wire tension and cover with protective skins. The cable begins as a collection of strands of small fiberglass threads. Lasers use fiber optic technology to drive data through threads at near the speed of light. After arriving in the country and connecting to an existing network, the data needed to read emails and open web pages is ultimately stored on a person's device. Most of us today are experiencing the internet primarily through Wi-Fi and telephone data plans, but these systems will eventually be connected to physical cables that quickly carry information across continents and oceans. During the manufacturing process, the cable goes through a high-speed jet engine-sized mill and wraps the wire around a copper case that carries electricity on the line to keep the data moving. Depending on the location of the cable, plastic, steel, and tar will be added later to withstand unpredictable marine environments. After all, the cable will be the size of a thick garden hose. The one-year plan involves mapping cable routes to avoid underwater hazards, but the cables must withstand strong currents, rock slides, earthquakes, and trawler obstructions. Each cable is said to last up to 25 years. Conveyor belts, which employees call cable routes, transport cables directly to Durable, which is docked in the Piscataqua River. The ship will carry over 4,000 miles of cable weighing approximately 3,500 tons when fully loaded. Onboard workers wind the cable into a spongy tank. One lays a giant garden hose in a quick loop to run the cord and the other lays down to secure the cord so it doesn't get entangled or entangled. Even if the team works 24 hours a day, it will take about four weeks for the first ship to have enough cables and set sail for the sea. The first transatlantic cable was completed in 1858 to connect the United States and the United Kingdom. Queen Victoria commemorated this opportunity with a message to President James Buchanan, and her delivery took 16 hours. Although new wireless and satellite technologies have been invented over the last few decades, cables are still the fastest, most efficient, and cheapest way to transmit information across the ocean. And it's still not cheap. Google doesn't want to disclose the cost of the project to Chile, but experts say underwater projects can cost up to $350 million depending on the length of the cable. In modern times, telecommunications companies used most cables, but in the last decade, American tech giants have begun to take control and Google has at least 14 cables around the world. According to telegeography, research firms Amazon, Facebook, and Microsoft have invested in other companies connecting data centers in North America, South America, Asia, Europe, and Africa. The federated state considers submarine cables to be an important infrastructure, and the project was the focus of geopolitical conflict. Last year, Australia intervened to prevent Chinese tech giant Huawei from building a cable between Australia and the Solomon Islands. This was afraid that the Chinese government would provide an access point to the network, and ship captain Yan Jiro said one of his most important tasks was to maintain the morale of the crew at sea for several weeks. Building the infrastructure of our digital world is a labor-intensive task. With 53 bedrooms and 60 bathrooms, Durable can accommodate up to 80 crew members. The team is divided into two 12-hour shifts. To sign in, the hallway warns people to be quiet because someone is always sleeping. The ship will carry enough supplies for at least 60 days and above 200 loaves of bread, 100 gallons of milk, 500 cartons of eggs, 800 pounds of beef, 
1,200 pounds of chicken, and 1,800 pounds of rice. There are also 300 rolls of paper towels, 500 rolls of toilet paper, 700 bars of soap, and nearly 600 pounds of laundry detergent. Bringing alcohol on board is prohibited. I'm still seasick, says Walt Oswald, a technician who has been laying cables on ships for 20 years. He puts a small band-aid behind his ears to control his nausea. This is not for everyone. Bad weather is inevitable. The bulge can reach up to 20 feet and the captain may need to cut the submarine cable for the ship to find a safer body of water. When the condition improves, the ship will return, retrieve the disconnected cable, attach to the floating buoy, tie it together, and then continue. Working on board is slow and painstaking. And that is all for today, folks. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so that you never miss any amazing videos from us.